Hi, this is uh, Dr. Kinnell with uh, another uh, short comment about a recently published paper. Uh, this time a paper in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Uh, uh, the lead author was a Dr. Evett uh, from uh, the Emory University uh, School of Medicine. Uh, what they did, about 150 patients uh, who had entered into a, a study a group, a cohort for Parkinson's disease. Uh, and what the authors uh, showed was it's, uh, it's uh, tenable that uh, low uh, vitamin D levels uh, contribute or are a significant factor in the cause of Parkinson's disease. The argument to date has been, of course, people with Parkinson's disease have low vitamin D levels because they stay inside. Well, what this study showed is that um, uh, after you get Parkinson in this cohort of patients, after you got Parkinsonism, your, your vitamin D levels actually went up, not down. And that, in spite of the fact that, uh, that the uh, initial levels uh, were uh, drawn in the uh, uh, summer when they should have been higher, and the second levels uh, were drawn in the, in the uh, winter and spring. So it, it, the levels were, went up in spite of the fact that the, they, they should have gone down just by the season. Now, the authors didn't know why these uh, levels went up in these patients, but it, it uh, disproves the idea that uh, uh, patients with Parkinson's have low vitamin D levels because they, uh, they stay inside. It shows just the opposite. It showed another interesting thing. Uh, the, uh, the subjects in the study were able to take uh, the, uh, uh, some vitamin D and a multivitamin, and the subjects who declined uh, to take it uh, had, had higher vitamin D levels than the ones taking the, uh, uh, the vitamin D supplement. You see that a lot with uh, multiple, multiple vitamins. He, uh, uh, other in, I think that uh, the other interesting thing was their discussion of how important uh, vitamin D is for the brain, especially their discussion of glutathione. Glutathione is like the... Uh, it's, it's what keeps the brain clean. It's, it's a, not only a master antioxidant, but it, uh, it helps get rid of, uh, of heavy metals. And uh, it, it's the brain's protector. And vitamin D is uh, uh, involved in the, in the uh, uh, production and the maintenance of adequate uh, glutathione levels in your brain. So uh, uh, the only, only thing I, had, I didn't like about this paper was that they didn't recommend that patients with Parkinsonism uh, uh, take Vitamin D, that is, they didn't recommend that the vitamin D deficiency in these Parkinson patients be treated. Uh, the only thing they recommended was that more studies need to be done. Uh, they should have recommended that uh, every patient with Parkinson's disease uh, take vitamin D. Uh, my personal opinion is if you have Parkinson's disease, you should be on five or 10,000 units a day of vitamin D. It's, a, it's a, uh, just a chance that uh, vitamin D will improve Parkinsonism is worth the, the uh, essential, the lack of risk of taking uh, 10,000 units a day. Uh, if you obtain a blood levels, uh, uh, it, it is simply, uh, there's just no risk associated with uh, doing that, uh, and uh, it may well be helpful. Uh, certainly 5,000 units a day at the, at the very minimum, but that would be a case where I think those vitamin D levels should be kept in the upper range of normal, so 80, 90, or 100. Uh, in the hope that it will have some effect on the course of the disease. Thank you.